Drop somewhere out. Put this on the ground. Hot. Nah, just, just crash somewhere else. I'm chilling down there. He has auto hunter on. I'm not really sure what the hell is going on. Man, explosion. God damn it, Just to be clear, I do not accept responsibility for any salty deaths caused by you trying to fly like me. Oh, and refunds are not accepted. <laughs> but seriously, jokey intros aside, I hope you guys are well and I'd like to welcome you all to a brand new video. If you're fairly familiar with my content, you'll know I love anything to do with helicopters or flying in general and so with that being said i'm pleased to finally bring you my series of helicopter flight tutorials to help teach you guys how to fly like i do in my videos i've had a lot of requests to address you guys with fly lessons and while i'm certainly late to the party i want to say that army games typically have really long-winded lifetimes so with that being said there is still some juice left in Armour 3 of course, but I also hope that the skills you learn from this tutorial series will not only benefit you in Armour 3, but future Armour games down the road too. Like I know my skills from Armour 2, like spending a lot of time flying in domination servers on Takistan. If you played it back then you'll remember that game mode. And it all transferred over to Armour 3 massively. Damn Tomahawk, you know how to fly. Dude, that was fucking awesome. That was fucking sick. Alright, well, uh, I guess we should give that up. That was the best job. goddamn flying I've ever seen, dude. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the first section of Landings 101. Now, it goes without saying that key bindings are everything and this is actually one of the things that I've been asked most times whenever I post on YouTube, what are my controls? So we're going to start by tackling that head on. Feel free to pause the video here if you want to save these settings and transfer them over to your game. basic gist of these controls is that I've actually copied the BF3 and BF4 helicopter bindings with a few minor tweaks here and there. So what does this mean Tommy? I hear you asking. Well, basically these controls, and I've found this is entirely subjective, have yielded me the best overall results for both shooting and landing. So people often ask me what joystick I use because the way I fly looks so smooth and it's all down to these key bindings. What I'm going to do now is go over every important binding you need to know so you can start to understand how exactly it will help you to land with both precision and speed. Right. So hopefully you've got all of your settings dialed in like me. Or if not, at least take some of the manoeuvring advice I'm about to offer. Now some of you guys watching might be at different levels of flying. So bear with me for now. I'm trying to accommodate for people who might also be good pilots but are now relearning their control setup so it matches mine. Alright, so to start from basics, W will start your engine and so raise your altitude and then S will do the opposite. So now we've got that taken care of and you're in a relatively steady hover, A and D will use your pedals to yaw you left and right. So this is really helpful for making final adjustments to landing but we'll get to that later. Okay, so now the cyclic. This is arguably the most crucial part of your flight setup and it all basically falls on the mouse. Anything concerning sensitivity or mouse DPI isn't really too important, so just make sure it feels right to you. However, I will be posting my detailed sensitivity and any other settings you might want to know down in the description. 
So, if we move the mouse around while hovering, you can see that your pitch direction changes, as shown by the handy virtual horizon in the cockpit. If it looks like this, you're in a whole lot of trouble. Speaking of trouble, that brings me to the emergency key bindings. If you need to pitch up quickly, you press X, which is far quicker than dragging your mouse back on the pad and praying to the armor gods that you don't run out of mouse mat. If you've recovered from this catastrophic nosedive, you now need to pitch down quickly, so to do this, you press C. If you need to roll left or right quicker than your mouse can flick, you can press Q for left and E for right. Remember though, muscle memory takes a while to forge, so if there's one thing I ask you to do, if you want your flying to improve, it's to be patient with these bindings for at least a week or two of practice flying, which I promise will pay off in the long run once you're used to this setup. Okay, so now that's all done and dusted, we can talk about the peripheral side of things. It doesn't matter if you already own one, but I would recommend that you don't use a joystick or hot as setup for armor flight. While it's really cool for realism and the advanced flight model, the basic flight model is actually pretty bare bones and it really shines with a simple but effective keyboard and mouse setup. If you're keen to splash the cash and improve your flying, there's one absolutely critical piece of equipment, which is face tracking, eye tracking, or some kind of head tracking device like a Track IR or Toby X eye tracker. I'm gonna link an excellent video by Dyslexi, an awesome armor player you've probably heard of that I've been watching for years. His stuff has brought my piloting to where it is now. He's basically got a video which outlines the benefits of being able to look around your cockpit whilst flying in video games such as armor. The general gist of head tracking though is that it offers unprecedented situational awareness and immersion by being able to look into your turns, track points of reference while landing such as nearby buildings, or to keep targets fixed in your view whilst your hands focus on the helo controls. In short, it's extremely helpful for flying among other things in armour. One brilliant substitute I found back when I didn't have the money for something like Track IR was simply increasing my field of view so I could see my feet while landing. Being able to see the bottom of the cockpit is really important because it helped me avoid a lot of crashes in the final stages of landing. Because if you're seeing the terrain you're about to hit, you're seeing the speed, the angle, any obstacles and how quickly you're about to touch down so i'll also be linking a handy portable application from armorholic that changes your armor field of view without any hassle or weird manual calculations in case you want to try this substitute i've got some clips now of me playing without my track ir back in the old days so it really goes without saying that you can be a good pilot without some kind of head tracking device. You're one good pilot. But you can also be an amazing pilot with it. So there's just some food for thought. Now we've covered these basic but fundamental elements, I'm going to leave it here for you guys to go out there and simply practice. I've already had friends who have had great results with this setup, but remember, it does take time, so you are probably going to have a few teething problems to begin with while you learn about the bindings. With that said, try to avoid any big public games where you are the sole focus of attention. So, for example, don't grab the mohawk at the beginning of a cough game if you're not comfortable with the bindings yet. I've dropped a really handy single player mission that you can practice with in the description, which is good because it allows you to respawn mid-air without repeated mission restarts, wasted time in loading screens, and maybe even a broken keyboard from all that rage. But in the meantime, I'll be putting up a special heli montage containing highlights from my Twitch streams as a filler for some of you guys who might be waiting for some of the more advanced flying stuff I've got to come. Next time, 
we'll be looking at different kinds of scenarios such as emergency landings, game mode differences and various other maneuvers that will help you to land quickly. Now this is going to be a more advanced episode so we're going to be looking at the ways in which I do some of my really quick landings such as landing without gaining altitude and tight urban LZs for all of you kamikaze cough pilots out there. I know who you are. <laughs> Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoy this series, it actually gives me a nice break from the usual heli montages and it allows me to try and teach you guys something in return for all of the awesome support you've given me over the time that I've been doing this. Leave me a rating if you enjoyed this episode and if you want to see more of me before the next video, I'm streaming on Twitch a lot more regularly which will be linked down below. See you guys later.